to the huddle. We ain't gonna never quit. We ain't gonna never fall. We will never give up. We are the ones that fight the good fight. When everything going wrong, we're the ones that get it all right. Each one reach one. Each one teach one. You are that one. Did you know you are enough? We are we got. We are we need. Welcome to the huddle. Welcome to the huddle. You already know what time it is, man. If you paying me some attention right now in the moment or on the replay, if you ain't heard it today, let me be the first one that you hear say, I love you. I believe in you. I need you. I need you right now to pay me some attention. Because your attention is the most powerful thing you can pay. And I'm standing in my purpose, giving my all to be worthy of it. So I need you. Good God Almighty. Want to give a shout out to my executive producer, who just happens to be my wardrobe coordinator. She said, boy, you've been shining today. Feel your soul burning. You've been on something deep. She said, you got to wear the red to represent the fire, the soul that burns within you. She said, but do me one favor. I said, what? She said, wear your hat to the back. Because you embodying hood, so. It's a good God Almighty. This one's for you, baby. Want to give a shout out to my homegirl, the greatest co host in the whole world. Y'all should have saw how she act last week when she got to be on this here camera and the world got to see her. Man, she been cutting the food all week. So I say, hey, we're going to keep it going. This is Alexa. Alexa, tell me something good. We all we got. We all we need. Oh, she's shining. She's shining. She want to be seen. I say, it's all good. Because see, see the polarity, the feminine energy, the mother earth. I'm talking about the one that hold me down while we hero train. So it ain't no thing for me to let her do her thing. Because she understands. Alexa, Alexa, who is the master? She let him get a little bit out there. Look at that, she over there dancing and smiling. She said, you don't let me get on camera now. Hey, look, now she got an ego. Alexa, who is the master? The Honorable Trad P. <laughs> See how we do. See how we do. She just over there grinning. You see her. Y'all see her grinning. I'm showing you to her. You see her grinning. She already know who the master get ready to kick this here judo in this here dojo. Alexa, one time. Good God, Tom Mighty. Trab P, you blanking. This leads me to the word tonight. See, me and Alexa got a connection. We connected. We link together. She understands me like I understand her. And I work her in a way to show the connection that we have. And I can depend on that connection. See how that work? Alexa, what's the most powerful music in the world? Good Soul by Trab P. See how we connect it. Alexa. What is the meaning of connection? 
Connection is usually defined as the act or state of connecting, joining, linking, or fastening together. For more, ask me to give you more definitions for connection. I call this one of them Peyton Manning words. I didn't have a word all day. My day been so impactful. My week been so impactful. I've been going through some things. Realizing some things. So it's hard to grab one word or to summarize it into one word. So I say, baby, I need a word. And the word came to me, connection. And what brought me to it, man, at the line, I got a lesson about connection. Talking real life. I ain't talking make believe. A week ago today. A week ago today. See, this is the power of the huddle. When we break the huddle, we got to go run the play. We come back to the huddle. Sometimes we come back with a first down. Sometimes we come back with a loss of yard. But that's the part of the game. We got to understand who we are in the huddle. To break it, to go run the play. First down, first down, touchdown. So a week ago today, my daughter got in the car. Picked her up from cheerleader trials. She was so excited. I made the team, Daddy Mama. I made it. She was just talking. I mean, she was on her cloud nine. She was talking so much that she got mad. She said, Daddy, will you stop cutting me off? Just let me talk. My wife looked at me and said, you see how you do? She just like you. So it got deep. She was so confident and proud of herself. Talking about a week ago today. I picked up, we was going to King's football game. Sat in the football game. My daddy came to the game. She said, Paul, Paul, I made the I made the cheerleading team. He said, Yeah. And he was proud of her. But my daughter 13 and she going through the stages where she began to see the trends in life. It's a sidebar. She just the idea of her wanting to have an earring in her nose. She really want that. But I got resistance. Don't get everything they want. So she put a little clip on. And I was telling my daddy about it, about how I'm reaching these stages in life to deal with these certain type of things. And I empathize with her, and I empathize with him now because I remember when I wanted an earring and he was like, don't you put no punk ass shit in your ear like that. But I came home with an earring anyway, then I had two. So I'm understanding his perspective and I'm understanding hers. And it's a life lesson because this is my first time being the daddy of a teenage girl. So she learned it like I'm learning. So I expressed this to my daddy. So now when we at the football game, he started laughing. He said, hey, Journey got that earring in there. He said, it looked good on you too, Journey. That thing looked good on your granddaughter. And she looked at me and gave me a smirk to say, see, Papa like it. Kind of shut me up. And he said, hey, it's a clip on, long as it's a clip on trap, it look good on her. She look like a big girl. She ain't got to get a piercing. Hey, the clip on look good. So at that moment, I saw a connection between him and his granddaughter. She loved the idea that my daddy approved of something that I didn't. And they 
saw a connection in each other. So the days after that, he felt good. I said, yeah, man, Journey made the cheerleading team. And we had a conversation. See, this is a real life story, man. I ain't talking make believe. We had a conversation about how life works in mysterious ways. I say, you know, Daddy, it's hard out here now, man. I say, man, I'm holding on, Daddy. Stand strong, Daddy. I say, but it's real out here, man. He say, I know that's right. I say, Daddy, and this was crazy, man. It ain't the bad things that's bringing on the struggle and the pressure. I say, I got two children that aspire to commit to things. My son play football. Man, it's a lot of sacrifice, dedication, time, money that goes into supporting him. And this is a powerful, positive thing that he's doing. My daughter aspires to be a cheerleader and a spirited little young lady who makes the team. And she come home and she say, Daddy, all my chill stuff costs 150 and I got to have it by Sunday. So it's a particular type of thing in this here heroism when the goodness in life brings the pressure and the sacrifice and the determination and the resistance. And all the things that make you practice what you preach and be what you teach. Life works very peculiar <laughs> when it's the goodness. Because they could not have these desires and aspires to be or show that they are. See how they work. So I'm talking to my daddy about it, and he say, yeah, man, times done change. I remember when you was playing, it didn't cost me nothing. They picked you up, brought you home. He said, I ain't have to do nothing when you played. All I had to do was go to the game and pay, pay the $7. Hell, come to think about it, didn't cost me shit when you played. I say, yeah, man. So I guess he felt the conviction and we had a connection in that moment and he empathized with me. He said, how much do it cost for all journey cheerleading stuff? I said, I don't know yet, daddy. She just, she just made a team, but I already know how it go, man. It ain't going to be free. He said, yeah, well, let me know. So then she come home and she say, Daddy, I got to have the 150 by Sunday. See, I already saw a little spark of a connection. See, the conductor brings the two to make the connection. See, the soul can't keep no secret that behavior won't reveal. See, me and my daddy got a peculiar relationship. We got a peculiar connection. But the subject of money is very vital in our connection. There's been some joys and there's been some pains. But being that he reached out, I told my daughter, I say, call your Paul Paul. And ask him for the 150 to buy your cheerleading stuff. She said, I don't know how to call nobody and ask nobody for nothing. I don't like that, Dad. I don't, I don't, I ain't, I don't, I don't like to do that, Dad. I, I can't call nobody and ask them for nothing. So I'm talking to my 13-year-old daughter. I said, it just ain't anybody. This your granddad. I say, and he love you, and he'll be glad to help you, 
and he need to help you. So she said, okay. So she called. She said, Paul, Paul, will you help pay for my chili? He said, how much? She said, 150 He said, okay. Hung up. And she felt vindicated. And she didn't get disappointed. She had a spark. And I explained to her, see, this is what brought me to this word. I'm going to tell you something about life. I'm going to get to it, but you got to ride with me and follow me. So you got fraternal and maternal. See, in most cases, the children don't real have a real connection with the fraternal grandparents like they do the maternal grandparents. This ain't good or bad. This ain't right or wrong. This is just how it work when there's order. See that mama and her daughter got a connection and a nurturing in them kids where the father's family, they got to get in where they fit in. And in most cases, when you see someone close with the father's side more than the mother's side, there was a malfunction in the order. So at 13, I'm honest enough to know my children don't have a real connection. But as a father in my position, I give my all to understand how it work to make it work for my family. My daddy needs the connection with his grandchildren just as much as my daughter needs the connection with her grandparents. See, I talk about we all we got, we all we need. The we is the most powerful thing. The question is more powerful than the answer. Who is your we? I'm talking about realistically. Who is your we? Who is your we? The question is more powerful than the answer. Who are your divine connections with? So the lesson to my daughter is you need to understand. See, you're fortunate to have grandparents. And as you embark a new stage of being a teenager, where you begin to gain your independence. See, there's a point in particular time in life when the connection is strong. You be there for your grandparents like your grandparents are there for you. So I wanted her to know that this ain't about $150. Call your papa. And so today I went and got the $150. And I sat down and I had a conversation with my daddy. Like I told you, me and my daddy got a peculiar relationship. The conversation of money has caused some pain in our relationship and tainted our connection. But when I'm talking to him today, he said, man, my grandbaby called me. That meant the world to me. She called her Paul Paul. She called her Paul Paul. He said, man, I told her, whatever she need, get it. If she needs some more, let me know. If she needs some more, let me know. And I'm watching him 
yearn. See, the soul can't keep no secret. That behavior won't reveal. I'm watching his behavior and his mannerisms. See, a man is as real as his reason. I'm watching a 70-year-old man who's at a stage where he need a reason and a phone call from his granddaughter has sparked a reason, has made a connection in his soul. And I realized at that point, I ain't got that connection with him. I ain't got that connection with him. And at that moment, I realized too, man, I had to stand in my own mirror at that moment to say, he been holding that connection for his grandbabies. He done gave me all he can give me. Fight your fight, son. You fought the fight with me. So my daughter got in the car today and she called her granddaddy to say thank you. I had to explain it to him in a way that he understand that it was deeper than money. I said, yeah, dad, I'm going to take the 150 and I'm going to put it in the bank and I'm going to send it to her cash app. So she buys her all her things and spend the money accordingly. This is a part of her independence. You ain't just giving her $150. You're giving her money to handle a responsibility that she has, that she needs. So he said, yeah, 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 yeah. So she called him and said, thank you, Paul Paul. He said, if you need anything else, if you need some more, just call me and let me know. The connection. Alexa. What is the meaning of connection? Connection is usually defined as the act or state of connecting, joining, linking, or fastening together. For more, ask me to give you more definitions for connection. One of the most deepest movies I watched one time, and this concept in the movie taught me a lot about connection. The movie Avatar. The first one and the second. Every time they would jump on the animal, it would plug the tail in. Once they connect, they had a oneness. They would move with each other movements. They would flow with each other. I said, this some real life shit. This ain't no make believe. Finna talk real. 70% of women, facts check me, 70% of women never experience a true orgasm. Alexa, what is the meaning of orgasm? Orgasm is a word that refers to the intense emotional and physical satisfaction that some people experience. It is usually experienced as a result of sexual stimulation. The word orgasm can be used as a noun to refer to the experience itself, or as a verb to refer to the process of reaching that experience. Some other synonyms for orgasm include climax, ecstasy, and release. 70% of women never experienced this. There's a higher percentage of men that never makes a woman experience this. Everybody fucking. But ain't nobody climaxing. 
Because this is a part of the connection. This is a part of the power of connecting to another, linking as one, moving when I move, grooving when I groove. Have you ever been connected? I'm talking real life. I ain't talking make believe. We all we got. We all we need. Last week, we talking about connection. Shout out to Deacon Ding, the comedian. He called me. He said, Trav, hey, man, I need you. I said, what's up, Deacon? He said, man, please cut my hair. I'm already out here in the lab chilling. I got my brother Black and my niece, him and his daughter here, and we vibing. We connected. So I say, yeah, come on, man. So he come over and sit down. Now, see, one of the things about hero training, this real talk, I ain't talking make-believe. Being a barber cultivated me to understand how I work and the universal truth in all of us. To say we all going through the same thing, working to survive and to maintain. And through this connection of empathy and understanding people. See, I always say this, man. There's two of the most powerful people in the world. Is your doctor and your barber or your beautician. So you go to the doctor and you submit. You let that person do whatever they want. Examine whatever they want with your body. You're vulnerable to their understanding. When you go to the barber shop. You sit beneath a man. And allow him to palm the crown of your head and be in control of your whole body and your whole soul because while you're laying there submitting to him vulnerable for him to do what he do to your crown, you're subject to the words he speak in your ears. And when the Bible understands the power of his position, see, this is where the connection come in. And when that connection is made, you go back every week or every two weeks to connect, to connect to a source. That has the power to dictate what you see when he give you to the mirror and how you perceive it when you walk out. It's the power of the connection. So Deacon Dean called and said, will you cut my hair? And the only hair that I cut now in my life on a consistent basis is myself and my son. So anytime I pull these clippers out to cut somebody else's head, I already know it's an opportunity to connect and cut somebody's head from the inside out. So he called me and he sat down. And he submitted his soul and his body. And I grabbed him by his face and moved him around to shape his beard up. And I spit him around by his head. I'm real aggressive. I'm an aggressive barber. It's just my style and my technique. But there's a connection happening. There's a connection happening. So he said, man, 
I don't know how I ended up here, Trav. But this is what I needed, brother. This is what I needed. And I said this to say, when you know and understand how it works, see, I'm talking about being genuine. I'm talking about being sincere. Alexa, what's the meaning of genuine? Genuine is an adjective that describes something that is authentic, real, and not fake or counterfeit. The word is often used to describe the true nature or character of a person or thing. For more, ask me to give you more definitions for genuine. Alexa, what's the meaning of sincere? Sincere is an adjective that describes something or someone free of deceit or falseness. It signifies a genuine, earnest nature. Someone who is sincere communicates and acts honestly, reflecting the entirety of their beliefs, thoughts, and desires. Sincerity is a virtue that is valued for its honesty and genuineness. So when you're genuine and sincere in the moment, and there's two or more gods in the house, not two or more heathens, not two or more fools, not two or more motherfuckers, Two or more humans being. <laughs> See how that works. Two or more humans that are being genuine and sincere. We're human beings, but what are we being? Two or more humans being genuine and sincere. The connection will happen. And if you don't have the tools, the keys of being genuine and being sincere in the moment, you ain't connected to no goddamn body. And ain't no goddamn body connected to you. Ain't no goddamn body connected to you, and you ain't connected to no goddamn body. Because at no moment are you genuine and sincere to say, I need you. See, my daddy, I'm going to be real with you. My daddy is an old man with a lot of money. Who's a 71-year-old child that has gotten old, that ain't never been dealt with, to truly understand love, to know how to give it. So he's lonely in this here world in a room full of people. You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? So the most genuine thing and sincere thing that he could have is with his grandchildren. Because the connection ain't got no corrosion on it. Sometimes you can go out there in the winter and your car won't start. And you think your battery dead, but the battery ain't dead. You got corrosion on your poles. You got corrosion on your terminals. And the corrosion won't allow the proper connection that it needs to make it start. So our parents who are children that has gotten old and their mothers and fathers are gone and they were never properly healed or dealed with. 
So they got some corrosion that they have accepted and they don't know how to get it off. And it ain't about them being right or wrong. It's about them being a part of a cycle that they didn't understand or still don't. But if you're paying me some attention, then you are one of the ones. You are one of the ones. He who turns the key. You are a turn of the key. You are a re of the cycle. You are the one that's going to make it right when everything going wrong to break the corrosion away so that the connections can be strong. See how that work? You see how that work? I see how it work. And I'm so thankful that I see how it work. Because if I don't see how it work, I would still be a hurt child. I would still be a hurt child. Hurt because my daddy can't see past the concept of money and realize that our connection is worth more than any amount of silver and gold. But he's just a hurt child that has gotten no. So I'm a neutral. I'm a conductor. If he ever wanted to right his wrongs, he write them through my children. He write them through his grandchildren. Miss Gray say she in the house. That's my children's maternal grandmother. As I talked about this tonight, me and my wife, we're riding from the game. We talked about the connection and the power. I say I'm so thankful for your mama's connection. I'm so thankful for her understanding her position. She cultivated my babies. With a maternal love. See I was cultivated by my mama's mama. With a maternal love. I didn't get a connection with my daddy's mama and daddy. Until I was grown. In the last parts of their life. So I understand how it works. This ain't about good or bad. This ain't about right or wrong. It's about knowing your position in it. And playing your part. So how is your connections and all the divine parts that you play? And when I say all the divine parts that you play, I'm talking about the ones that define your we. See, I got two children. See, the mother and the father. We made them babies. The mother and the father. We made them babies. So how are we going to get these babies to the finish line? Because in this here world of heroism, the most powerful thing you can pay is your attention. And you pay your attention to who you care for. And there's nobody on planet Earth that you care for and depend on your care more than your children. So your children becomes all your attention. So your children becomes the most powerful thing that you can give to this here world. When the job is said and done, the objective is to give the world a better version of you.
boy requires a solid connection to do that. What kind of connection do you have? First time I ever heard the word connect or connection was on some dope boy shit. That's the connect. That's the link to everything. Then I used to see the connect. Now you say that weak ass motherfucker. Excuse my language, but that's the way I thought about any weak ass motherfucking drug dealer who sold crack cocaine to destroy my motherfucking family. Fuck them. That's the connection. That weak motherfucker. And he's still a weak motherfucker, whoever he is, that call himself the connect. The source, the link to the drugs that make children suffer. Fuck the connect. That's the first time I heard the word connect. He ain't connected to shit. That's why I say the we. See, my baby got to understand her connections. You got to understand your connections. Who you connected to? Who you linked to? Who really got you? When you in the time of need. <sighs> Alexa, what is the meaning of connection? Connection is usually defined as the act or state of connecting, joining, linking, or fastening together. For more, ask me to give you more definitions for connection. The law of attraction. The law of attraction. The principles of magnetic force. <laughs> when a magnet hit metal, <laughs> it attracts so much that it connect. Boom. Boom. You attract. You attract. You know, it's the iron in the hypocrisy of us today. She say, he ain't shit. He say, she ain't shit. But y'all attracted each other. And then y'all connected and made a goddamn baby. And I say, goddamn baby, because... God is care. God is love. God is nurturing. God is the connection between a mother and a father that will surely commit with all they have to cultivate a child in the ways of righteousness. So when a baby comes in this here world, and there's no connection between its mama and its daddy. Oh, that baby is somewhat God damned. We have a God damned society right now. Don't we all agree? <laughs> See how that work? Yeah. These goddamn children out here today are wild. See how we say that? Man, you already know what time it is, man. I got to go to bed too, man. Hey, Jerome, I love you, Jerome. I love you, brother. And I appreciate your attention. And I always want you to know, brother, whether it's here or anywhere, you are enough, man. Each one reach one. Each one teach one, brother. You are enough. I always know that. Every time you wake up and rise and plant your feet on the ground, you show that. 
Brother Junior, I love you, man. I appreciate your comment. Want to give a shout out to my brother Kamara. We had some powerful conversations, man. I call him my big brother because he a brother of counsel. Want to give a shout out to my brother Munt. I love you, brother. Want to give a shout out to my big brother Wood. Want to give a shout out to my big brother Crump. Want to give a shout out to my brother Bam. Want to give a shout out to every brother, man, that I got a connection with. You already know how it go. I have grown into a better me. I'm growing, baby. I'm better than who I used to be. I have grown into a better me. I'm growing, baby. I'm better than who I used to be. Every day we start to play the same way. You wake up and you go in that bathroom. And while you're in that bathroom at some point, you got to stand in that there mirror to start your day. To brush your teeth or wash your face. The eyes are the mirrors to the soul. When you're in that damn mirror in that, that damn bathroom that we start off in every start of the day, you look in thy own eyes and say, I love you. I believe in you. You are powerful. You are strong. You set the narrative. And when you leave out and you open that door, and you go out to face the world, and they see what you just saw. You can't see it no more till you come back. You run the play, and you be, you be, first down, first down, touchdown. We all we got, we all we need. I love you.